Hello everyone, our project is market basket analysis. What's in your shopping cart? My name is Chen Yunzhu. Another team member is Yini Zhang. In this presentation, we are going to talk about motivation and data sets, exploratory data analysis, recommendation, and predictive modeling. A little background about Instacart. Instacart is a same-day grocery delivery service that can save yourself that trip to the grocery stores. It will connect you with personal shoppers in your area to shop and deliver groceries from your favorite stores. Instacart has several main competitors like Amazon Fresh and Shipped. So, Hopefully, through our project and some insights, Instacart can gain more users and provide life for shopping experience to increase customer retention. On the user side, you do not need to go to a grocery store to shop your favorites and it can save you a lot of time. Also, by our recommendation algorithm, you can make it easy to fill your refrigerator and pantry with your personal favorites in the Instacart. The data set we use is the Instacart Online Grocery Shopping Data Set 2017. It's a relational set of files describing customer orders. It's about 3 million orders for 50,000 products. Basically, we have 5 data sheets and we need to combine them in, in some ways to create some important features for later usage. We first did a exploratory data analysis. Here's a graph about number of sales from departments per aisle. The size of box shows number of sales. So produce, beverage, frozen are department names. Yogurt, packaged cheese, uh, milk, this, uh, this are aisle name. So we can see though the grocery provide this, uh, this many different categories of products, uh, pr the sales of produce and dairy X department has some, um, has some major contribution of the sales. Here's a popular product in shopping history. So we made a uh, word cloud and we can see the number one popular product is banana. And interestingly, interesting thing is the bag of organic uh, banana is the second popular product. So if you are running business in grocery or supermarket, don't forget to put banana on your shelves. Uh, we think it can boost your sales. We also uh, made a histogram about days since prior order. We can see that customer will come back and use Instacart in about seven days and uh, in the thirty in thirty days. Also, there are some sub peaks number like like fourteen days, twenty one days, twenty eight days. So uh, it's easy to see that it's basically uh, customer will come back and reorder um, on a weekly basis or monthly basis. We then made a graph about popular products in a day and it is split by 12 p.m. Oh. So we can see in the morning, customers tend to buy healthy foods like almonds, apples, and milk. However, in the afternoon or in the evening, customer, uh, t customers tend to buy unhealthy foods like ice cream and gelato, we can see the uh, top 20 popular products in the evening are like ice cream. Now let's start with the product recommendation part. The first thing we want to do is to recommend new products to customers. So our main idea is to first group the customers based on similarities and we recommend at a group level. To do this, we need to extract some features from user habits and preferences and then we use k-means to train all these features and after we do the clustering, we will recommend the most popular products in each group. These are all the features we extracted 
And the first five columns here are the user habits features. Um, for example, it includes the day of week and the hour of the day they usually place their order, how many days passed since previous order, their total number of orders, and their total number of products bought. The later five features are extracted from user preferences. We use word to vec to map the product name to five dimensions, and then we combine all these 10 features together and we train it in k-means. But we need to find what is the optimal number of clusters. So we draw this within set sum of square arrow plot, and we can see that as the cluster number increases, the sum is actually uh, decreases. So we will use the uh, elbow of this graph, which is uh, k is 40, to be the optimal number of cluster. And then we ran the k-means model with 40 clusters, and these are the results we get. Here is a plot for the centers of k-means clusters. This is a visualization of k-means clusters in two dimensions. We can then get the most popular products in each cluster. For example, if we want to get the top 10 products in cluster 0, we will have this, and uh, if a customer is in cluster 0 and haven't bought strawberries before, we will definitely recommend strawberries to the customer. And we can then draw the subplots for the products in each cluster. Since we have 40 clusters, we will draw 4 subplots for clearer display. So now we will take a look at uh, one of the subplots. Uh, for example, these are the most popular products in cluster 10 to 19. We can see that uh, customers in cluster 12, they prefer to buy apples, clementines, and the raspberries, while customers in cluster 18 prefer to buy coconut water, fat-free uh, milk, and natural spring water, which are more like healthy drinks. Uh, so by this, we can distinguish between the products in different clusters and then recommend based on their different clusters. The second part of recommendation is to recommend product bundles. We want to see which products are more often bought together. For example, if a customer adds bananas to cart, which product will be added to cart next? We do the calculation by using our recommendation algorithm. So first, we extract some bigram features from each order, and we get a frequency of each bigram. The second step is to generate recommendation list for each product based on the bigram frequency and some form of randomness. At last, we evaluate our algorithm on a test dataset, and we get a test score by calculating that in each order, how many percent of the products bought are from our recommendation list. For example, if we have a bigram that is sorted in a descending order like this, and we want to get a recommendation for Apple. So first, we specify how many products we want to recommend for Apple, and we denote that parameter as k. And then we compare k with the number of products in the bigrams, which in this case is 4. And if k is 3, we will recommend banana, avocado, and strawberry from the highest frequency to the lowest. And if k is 2, we will first recommend banana, and randomly pick one in avocado and strawberry. But what if k is so large and we don't have enough combination in the bigrams to feed that recommendation list? For example, if k is 10, so in this case we will first pick all the uh, products in the bigram, we will put banana, av avocado, strawberry, and milk in the list, and then we will generate the recommendation following the same rule for banana and use that to feed the list for apple. So here are some results we get. Uh, here are some uh, usually bought together products. For example, banana and organic avocado are bought 36 times. These are the functions we use to uh, generate our recommendation algorithm. For example, if we want to get 15 recommended products for organic mint bunch, we will call this function, and here's the result we get. Finally, we evaluate it on a test dataset. So finally, our test score is 0.18. It means that in each order, 18% of the products they bought are actually from our recommendation list. Let's now talk about predictive modeling. 
So we first create 15 new features. The way we did this is that um, we first get features for products, for users, for pro users and products. Then we define a function that can retrieve all the features we calculated. So when we need to um, train the models, we just um, can we can just um, create a feature to use list to select the important features we need to apply. So um, here, day of week is a feature that we, d we didn't use, so we just command it out. The algorithm we used are XGBoost and LightGBM. Um, why we use these two algorithms instead of traditional support vector machine logistic regression? Um, because it has faster training speed and high efficiency. Also, it has um, lower memory usage. In addition, it's capable of handle, handling large-scale data. So if we use uh, SVM and logistic regression um, here, it will be super slow. Here's ideal output that, uh, that submit to Cargo for evaluation. So um, for each order ID, we predict which products will be in this order, in this order. However, what's the threshold probability to select product into the corresponding order? So uh, we first, we can first produce equivalent output with the true, uh, train ground, ground truth data. With that being said, we first, uh, in the train, with that being said, in the training set, we separate the data into the train and validation set. Then we can produce the this, like this out, output for each order ID. We have the true label, and we have the uh, predicted label. Then we can calculate the uh, F1 score. Here's F1 score for light GBM. So we can see uh, at threshold 0.2, we achieve the highest F1 score. At threshold 0.17, we achieve the uh, highest F1 score for extra boost. So here's the results. Uh, we can produce equivalent results through our training data set. Um, so it's about um, 0.38 for both algorithms. And then we use um, the threshold we got here to produce another outcome for the whole training set and submit to a couple. Um, it is valued as um, 0.37 for both of them. So the, you may see, think it's a very low accuracy, um, but uh, the highest cargo score is 0 0.409. So I think it's pretty good though. Our next step would be get more correlated features and also systematically training the models to improve accuracy. Thank you so much.